Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen in the CitizenCon 2954 presentation, Dressed to Kill, COAG revealed specialist equipment, soft classes, monster hunting, and giant sandworm raids. This is a summary of that presentation with a load of added context and explanation. So they are making it so that you can combine clothes and armor together in the future. This will give you a whole host of new choices and looks for your player, but they are also making it so that all clothes and armor, flight suits, helmets, etc., have their own stats and focuses and potentially gear set bonuses. So this also includes specialist equipment and armor. They've said that they don't want hard classes in Star Citizen. There, there isn't a hard class. You can't go, I'm going to be a paladin or, well, I suppose, what's, what's more Star Citizen? -y? A bounty hunter. There's no hard bounty hunter class. You can do anything you want in Star Citizen and you're only really locked by the equipment that you own and what you decide to wear, what you decide to uh, specialize in. So it's going to be your skill as a person doing a particular role, but also the gear and equipment that you have and select. So they showed off some examples of combos and gear sets that you could use for effectively what is soft classes. So you've got like a pilot class where you'd be wearing um, some lighter armor that would give you high G resistance, an airtight suit. It's got good EVA mobility, good general mobility, and uh, you're going to be uh, having like reasonable protection with that. Maybe if you were a driver, you'd have a higher G resistance, but um, lose some of the other benefits with it not being airtight. If you want to be a sniper or a stealthy boy, uh, then you will have sort of high stealth and mobility and you'll be hard to detect. And if you wear all of like a particular set, that might reduce your detection even further, even from active detection. They showed off a tank. This will have like the heaviest armor and you can't be staggered by like small arms fire if you're wearing the full set of their like the heaviest tank armor. And there's a tracker class or tracker armor set, shall I say, uh, which it has quite heavy armor and powerful scanners for detection. Some of these sets might get bonuses for equipping all or multiple parts. There might be some suits like the heavy ones that don't come with EVA as standard. Some suits uh, and sets will have specific like unlocks because of them. Like if you're wearing combat set of armor, you may have that um, dynamic crosshair or a uh, better HUDs or whatever. Like if you're the pilot class, then you're gonna be able to have your HUD cast to your helmet and all your ship MFDs, stuff like that, all cast to your helmet, which is obviously gonna be very useful. They are gonna be making it so that not all seats and stations can be used when you are in heavier armors. They will incentivize you to use light armor or civilian clothing, stuff like that when you are running around. You will be able to obviously change and switch your gear. I mean, if you want to go from piloting a ship or doing something around your ship to then assaulting someone on the ground, go to a suit locker, change your gear. Some armor won't be space worthy. There will also be armor focused for non-combat roles in the future, enabling you to better um, mine or salvage or be better at the medical profession or uh, detection of certain things. In your group, though, you could have a mix of roles covering all different tasks and specializations. Obviously, you might want to run stuff solo, so you have to prepare accordingly. CIG have also said the best gear in game will be crafted, so you'll be able to craft a load of this cool stuff, and it will also be upgradable. And obviously, you'll be able to mix and match whatever gear you want to make a completely custom kind of role. I mean, they're all effectively custom, but you're not hard locked by any particular thing and you can sort of just build your own gear for your um, own needs. The only interesting thing you might be locked out of by having a weird sort of mishmash of gear is some of the set bonuses um, for wearing particular parts with each other. But every different set of armor is going to have different stats and resistances to different types of damage and all that sort of jazz as well. What's this? A Toby Eye Tracker ad? I have compiled a list of suitable occasions to purchase the Toby Eye Tracker as a present. For yourself, for your nan's 80th birthday, she may be an avid player of Star Citizen, or you can just go, oh no nan, you don't like it, it's okay, I'll use it for you, don't worry. Baby showers, or an infant's birthday. There are very few situations where the Toby Eye Tracker is not the perfect gift. The Toby Eye Tracker gives you natively supported high precision head and eye tracking for Star Citizen, and a load of other games for that matter. 
There's a load of cool bits like Toby Ghost, so you can see where eyes are looking, but also you got camera boost, which is like mouse acceleration for your head. Until the 28th of October, you can grab 15% off by using the link below. There's also a sweepstake running where you can grab yourself a Star Citizen ship and start a pack. Again, links below. Now, back to the video. The other major set of things they showed in the presentation was to do with sandworms. There was a big sandworm raid that they showed. You can fight massive sandworms known as the Falakar. They originally were going to be homed in the Lear system, but seeing the Lear system is not part of the first five systems they want to bring to Star Citizen as part of 1.0, they are now going to be found on Pyro 2 Monox. These sandworms first shown at CitizenCon 2016. They're just massive. They're absolutely huge. You'll be able to go to Monarchs, you'll be able to look for some form of worm sign, then you'll want to use a ground vehicle uh, to attract the worm. This will sort of like bait it to turn up, the ground will shake, and uh, you'll probably want to get out of the way, and then it will come out of the ground. It's massive, it has a lot of health, uh, it's going to take a relatively large group to just come along and um, take it down. Also, CIG have said you probably don't want to drop a like A2 on it, uh, a bomb on it, or you might really like damage or destroy its valuable loot. I was going to say, I wonder if you can build bases and then get the sandworms to either attack them or use the base to attack the sandworm. But the sandworms, the Valakar, they might be in nature reserves or something like that, or otherwise unbuildable ground. Um, although that is in Pyro and not UE Lawful Space. We'll have to wait and see, I suppose, exactly what you could do. Anyway, the worms come up, you're fighting it, it's thrashing around, it's slamming the ground, it can spit compressed sand at targets as well, which is incredibly dangerous, it can shoot ships out of the sky. The worm may retreat underground, in which case you'll need to bait it back up with a ground vehicle, meaning you'll need to keep that ground vehicle alive during the fight. It's going to be a difficult fight as well. But if you take it down, you'll be rewarded with rare, valuable loot and harvestables. You can remove the worm's teeth and break off barnacles from its hide and then sort of reveal pearls. These items will have varying qualities. They can be used for crafting or sold. There you go. Big old sandworms in Star Citizen. They're actually real. And there will also be other monsters to hunt in the future from Boreal Stalkers, known as the um, Microtech Yeti, Star Wolves of Crusader, and Pyro Crabs, to name but a few. Potentially, there'll be a whole host of monster hunting missions and researching quests as well with 1.0. They are also going to be putting small worms, Valaka, in caves around monarchs as well. So there are juveniles, which will be sort of like around caves when you're like doing the mining stuff and you mine those nodes and it will attract the, the juveniles and you, you'll probably want to deal with those. But if you kill too many, then the much larger adults will turn up. But these are tiny in comparison to the massive beast that is that Elder Worm. CIG did say that this should all be in our hands within the next 12 to 18 months, although I had an assumption there that was the uh, sort of monster hunting quests and researching quests for like these large monsters being a part of 1.0, but we'll have to wait and see. Star Citizen planets and biomes will be full of rich wildlife, dangerous and benign across its five starting systems. And it was confirmed by CIG there will be a wide range of this for the 1.0 release. But there will be variants of things like the Valakar, um, sort of jungle variants and swamp variants, stuff like that. In some cases, kind of being their own specific creature. Boom! That's your summary on big old sandworms, monster hunting, raids and soft classes and that specialist equipment stuff. I am really interested to know, do you like CIG's ideas about the sort of soft classes, basically being able to wear whatever you want to specialise in the role that you want to do and potentially some bonuses for wearing a particular class set. Please remember as well that you're going to be able to earn some interesting equipment and blueprints from sort of um, going along with different factions and completing missions and getting along the reputation system. I'm really excited to see where that goes. And it's going to be great to be able to specialize in the role that you want. But are you also excited by sandworm fighting? And and I, I really like that. I, I think it's a bit silly, but it is a cool sci-fi thing. And I do want monster hunting in the game. I've wanted it for ages. It's one of the things I'm kind of excited about. I like these big PVE silly raids. 
I like being rewarded for being a little organized and taking on something like this. I'd love to know your thoughts and questions in the comments below, but also listen to this lovely potato headed chap about getting NordVPN and click the links below to help support the channel. A very long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, CIG had taken over the development of NordVPN. And at NordicismCon, the yearly Nord FanFest, they were releasing their first game, Squadron Nordy 2. It's amazing, and it would truly revolutionize the FPS industry. Then I woke up and realized that NordVPN is already great and released, and it doesn't need an FPS module, it's a VPN. And you should get it now, links below, discount. That helps channel. Read bullet points. Every month we have a ship giveaway for October. It's for a Drake Corsair with a game package and lifetime insurance. All you have to do to be in for a chance of winning that lovely Star Citizen access and ship that can be used for exploration, but it's also this cool little multi-role, multi-crew ship. You just need a comment on any of our videos made during October. That will go into the hat. It's not a hat, it's it's a spreadsheet. It goes into that, and then a random person is chosen. With the addition of Alpha 4.0 and Pyro, there's going to be tons more to see and explore. The Corsair is perfect for that. Good luck. Please consider supporting the channel as well. We've got the join button under our videos that will make you a channel member. That goes a long way in supporting the channel, as does becoming a Patreon. It's pretty much the same thing, but for different mediums. You can also like, comment, share, or sub, things like that. That all helps with the channel hugely. Thank you so much for your support and watching, and I hope you have a great October.